This is the best location in downtown of Weihai City with picturesque views. It's a fantastic place to live as it is near the beach and also very close to schools, shopping centers, restaurants, and hospitals. A development company is building a high end condominium in this area, and it was planned that the construction work will be completed in December last year, and the owners could move in then. But more than half a year has passed, and the project is still not completed. In 2018, Da Yong bought a suite here when the housing market in Weihai City was the hottest. His suite is around 1,600 square feet, and the total price was around 465,000 USD. Da Yong spent all his money on the 155,000 down payment and took out a mortgage for the rest. He waited in anticipation, planning to move into his new home at the end of 2020. However, since he bought the house, the construction has barely progressed, completely stagnant. Not only was the house delayed, but Da Yong had to keep paying his 1600 monthly mortgage, and it became very stressful for him. Da Yong had no financial ability to pay additional rent, so he simply packed up from his old house and moved into the new building, which was still under construction, becoming the only resident of that community. The area is overgrown with weeds. There are construction safety nets hanging on the periphery of the building that have yet to be removed. But Da Yong is optimistic. He said some people may feel impressive from living in a detached house, but he has an entire community to himself. So, isn't that even more impressive? Da Yong is just one of the many homeowners across the country who is experiencing this situation. In Qingdao, Shandong Province, there is a residential community called Shan's Elysee. The construction work has been shut down for seven years, and the owners have been disappointed for seven years. Some owners have no choice but to move into the house. That has not yet been completed. When the Shan's Elysee community was being built, it was during the time when the housing prices in Qingdao were soaring, and the location of the district was also relatively good. So once the Shan's Elysee district opened up for sale, the houses were immediately sold out. The 256 owners who bought their houses with loans from the bank had to pay the mortgage every month, which was very stressful for them. But whenever they thought of the building under construction, They were still full of hope and expectation. And since the price of the house has been rising, the owners thought that as long as the house was completed and delivered, they could still earn a lot of profit even after they sell the house. So, for every customer who needed to repay the loan, while their financial burden was very heavy, they were still full of confidence every day and looking forward to moving in after the completion of the building. But things didn't go as smoothly as they had hoped. When the news of the construction shutdown came out in 2014, the 286 owners ran to the Shan's Elysee district to investigate and were dumbfounded. There were weeds everywhere and the construction equipment was long gone. The entire construction site was empty and it was clear that the construction had been stopped for a long time before the owners even received the news. The owners took out their cell phones immediately. Some called the police, some tried to contact the developers. But nothing worked as all of them were ignored. Later, the owners were informed that the developers' funds had broken down and that the community could not be completed, and the developers had absconded with the money. The Shan's Elysee district has since become an abandoned project and is still shut down. For seven years, many owners still need to make monthly mortgage payments as usual. Some owners had to rent out their own suites and move into shabby houses in order to lessen their financial burden. In Dalian, Liaoning Province, the Junlin World Community started selling houses in 2012. Nine years have passed, and the condominiums are still not completed, and more than 800 owners are still waiting in agony. Many owners can't bear the huge financial pressure and were forced to move into the unfinished houses. Such stories are common in mainland China, from big cities like Beijing, Shanghai, and Guangzhou to small counties. These unfinished and long-term shutdowns of buildings are called rotten-ended buildings. It refers to a real estate project that has been approved and had planning procedures completed, 
but after the project has started, it is stopped for more than a year due to the inability of the developers to continue investing in construction, debt disputes or other reasons. These buildings are kept in a state of construction, but the surrounding environment looks out of place from the rest of the city, so it is often known as the psoriasis of the city. Some people conclude that buying a house in China is like a big gamble. You spend all your savings, sometimes even using your parents' savings, and take out a huge bank loan, but if the house you buy is not finished, you're the only one bearing the loss. In China, the phenomenon of rotten-ended buildings has been widespread for many years, and is related to the reform of China's housing system. On July 3, 1998, the Chinese State Council issued the Notice on Further Reform of Urban Housing Systems and Speeding Up Housing Development. It clarified the direction of marketization, monetization, and commercialization reform of urban housing and initiated a thorough reform of the housing system. It ended the physical distribution of housing and implemented monetization of housing allocation, creating a housing supply system based on market supply. Since then, the real estate sector has become one of the key drivers of China's rapid economic growth, achieving a value added of 1.1 trillion USD in 2020, accounting for 7.3% of China's GDP that year, compared to 4.1% in 2000. Zhang Dawei, chief analyst of Centerline Property, said that the various quality and delivery problems in the real estate market are basically all related to the pre-sale system. According to China's Urban Real Estate Administration law, real estate developers can pre-sale houses under construction to buyers who pay a deposit or house payment in advance. In other words, as soon as the developer purchases the land use rights from the government and starts construction, they can start selling the houses. The pre-sale ratio of houses in major cities in China is generally above 80%, and in some cities it is even above 90%. This pre-sale system allows small businesses with little capital strengths to become real estate developers. As long as they pay the government for the land and have a little money to start the project, they can start collecting money from the pre-sales, and at the same time, they can take out a loan for the project. The pre-sale system of housing makes it easier to start real estate projects, boost economic growth, and make government officials look better. There is an even greater benefit to the government in that it can sell the land quicker and receive more money. According to statistics, total land sales from all Chinese cities generated up to 1.3 trillion USD in 2020, accounting for 84% of government revenues. As of the end of April 2021, the country's land sales revenue has reached about 325.6 billion USD, up 35% from the same period last year. From January to March 2021, the highest revenue from land sales was in Shanghai, with over 14 billion USD followed by Hangzhou, with over 11 billion USD in land sales. Third place went to Guangzhou, with more than 4.6 billion USD in land sales. For the Chinese Communist government, as long as they get the money from land sales, it's not a big concern as to whether the project will ultimately be completed or not. So in the construction of real estate projects, there are situations where developers go bankrupt or simply run away with the money. There are also companies that inject capital to start real estate projects pre-sell the houses, collect the money, and then withdraw the funds to extract huge profits while leaving the projects to rot. In fact, no matter the reason for the real estate project failures, the loss ultimately falls on the general public in the end. 